Hello, everyone. My name is Oliver Bailey, and I'm an Educational Services Manager at Oxford University Press. I work with teachers to help them get the best from our materials in workshops and webinars. Today, I'm going to talk about spring and Easter ideas for in-class and online lessons. I'm going to focus on young learners, but festivals are used in classes all over the world with students of all ages. And there are many reasons for this. Teachers and students often know them or have heard of them, and they're featured in many textbooks. Also, they provide lots of opportunities for language input and output, and they can become an event at the school. And finally, they are flexible. You can focus on the language, use them for crafts and projects, and also introduce cross-cultural content. Today, I'll be talking about activities that can be adapted for use in a physical classroom or online. Before I start, there are some important things to remember about an in-class versus an online setting. Although online, there are many different platforms such as Zoom, Skype, and others, and you may be teaching one-to-one -one or with small or large groups in an online setting, um, these different platforms require some experience to get used to. However, many of the skills and techniques remain the same as if you're in a classroom setting physically, especially with young learners. Some examples involve good lesson planning, modeling language clearly using body language or visual aids, eliciting student responses so that the lesson is not teacher-centered, and trying to involve students as much as possible. Finally, having a sense of fun wherever possible and appropriate. From delivering and participating in online webinars as part of my work, I know that participants can still really feel engaged with a speaker who uses energy and fun at the right times in an online lesson. So although teaching young learners online definitely has some new challenges, by adapting what we do a bit, we can balance using a new medium with our existing materials and skill set. So I'm going to talk about three areas in the context of festivals and events, songs, drawing, and mini projects. By adapting what we usually do, these can be used both in class and online to varying degrees. You can use them separately as uh, fun language learning opportunities, or if you put them together, you can create an event feeling. So let's look at songs first of all. Songs are a key part of teaching and learning language for all ages, but especially for young learners. We know that they have many benefits, uh, teaching vocabulary and pronunciation. They can help with classroom management as well. They can stir or settle a class. And finally, they can be great for content such as listening quizzes, gap fill activities, and more. Songs work really well in the classroom, but just as well in online teaching. Depending on your software, you may be able to play the song online in the online class or share a song video. If you can't, you could still sing the song using your microphone and many of the activities and benefits still work using video conferencing. But how would we teach the song? The key thing is to break the song down and work with the language line by line several times so students gain confidence and build up to doing it together. This is true on or offline. As a first step, students just listen to the whole song once to get the rhythm. Then we could teach key language and sentence patterns line by line with students thinking of gestures as we go through. It's important that the students think of the gestures as this is activating their critical thinking skills and it makes this song more memorable. Finally, we could play the song again and students listen and act with gestures. We could then build up to all singing the song together. As an example, here's an Easter song that I really like. This is the Easter Bunny song from Holiday Jazz Chants, but the ideas above work for any song. If you look, you can find songs for every month of the year. For example, February would be Valentine's. Of course, there are many songs available online for you to use or show, and you can find more at the Oxford Teachers Club. At the end of this, I will share a link with you. In this case, I'll sing the song for you once so you can get the idea. Students, just listen and follow along with me on the screen. If you prefer not to sing, this is where I might play audio online. Here we go. Here comes the Easter Bunny, my friend the Easter Bunny. 
Here comes the Easter bunny, hopping along, singing a bunny song. I love the Easter bunny, my friend the Easter bunny. Here comes the Easter bunny, hop, hop, hopping along. Now, we could work on each sentence uh, or phrase one by one. For example, on this screen, I might pick the sentence, I love the Easter bunny, and ask students to think of a gesture for I love. For example, they could put their fingers together in a heart like this and show me on the web camera. Or hopping, they might do this and jump up and down. As you can see, great fun. After we've practiced the language and the gestures together, then we might do the song again and do the whole piece. The next area that I'd like to talk about is uh, drawing. Now, drawing is a powerful tool for learning a language. This is still true when learning online because drawing is a technique for sharing meaning visually. With young learners, it can be very powerful because not only do they love to draw, but teacher drawing can really get their attention and intrigue them. Teacher drawing is just like a classroom. The main point is not necessarily the action, but the generation of language. A key element is to engage students during the learning process about what you are drawing by using questioning techniques. These focus the students on you and review or practice the key language. Let me give you an example. On the screen, you can see a blank piece of paper. I'll use animation here, but you could draw on a piece of paper and hold this up to the camera, asking questions as you go. For example, if I'm the teacher and you are the students, what can you see? A line, very good. How many lines can you see? One line? Uh, no, I can see two lines. So what shapes are there? That's right, circles. And how many circles? Very good. What can you see now? A star, excellent. So what am I drawing? That's right, it's an egg. And what kind of egg is it? Does anybody know? An Easter egg, very good everybody. And so on. Now. How could I do this as student drawing in class or online? Well, I could show the Easter egg I drew earlier as a model. It's very important for young learners that they have a model to draw on or to work with. And I could elicit or review this language again and get the students to tell me what colors or shapes they see. Now I could also ask the students to draw or copy me. Our classrooms shouldn't be passive and online lessons of course don't have to be passive either. Drawing and colouring does take time though, so if your online lessons are very short, you could give this as homework. How could you do this? Well, you could ask students to copy the egg, um, but add labels. Their homework is to colour. Just colour in the shapes and add the labels. So in the next students, students could hold up to the screen what they've done as homework, and you could use this as evidence. They could also describe each other's work that they can see on the screen. Remember, it's always useful to have students with a piece of paper and a pen or pencil, even in an online lesson. Finally, if you do make anything like this, remember to keep everything physical in a folder. Later in the course, I could use this again by showing this piece of paper or this picture on the screen and asking the students to remember what it is and what language they remember. This is great for recycling the vocabulary and works just as well online as in the classroom. And the final thing I want to share today with you is mini projects. Projects are wonderful because they generate so much language from both teacher and student. Also, they don't have to be complicated. In fact, they should be kept simple for young learners. Many young learners enjoy activities like making and colouring, so events and festivals are a great opportunity for small projects as they bring excitement, colour and language development too. Now, of course, young students should be supervised if cutting or making, and any tools used or items made should be appropriate and safe for the age. So make sure that you're clear about this and communicate with parents about any needs or safety issues. But what about if you're teaching online? Mini projects can still work, but we can think of using materials students might have at home. 
we should be more flexible about what they use to make the final product and the product itself so we can accommodate the fact that some students might not want to or have the same materials you do. Also, you can model what you want the students to do and they can do this offline because that saves precious screen time for other activities. Mini projects are also a good homework task to keep students occupied, especially if they're stuck at home. So at the next lesson, they can hold up what they've done as evidence. And if they have the language, describe what they have made in simple terms. Let me give you a couple of examples. Here's a mini project that I made. In this case, Easter rabbit ears. I made these using materials in my house. Uh, for example, you can see a hairband and a paper plate. Um, in this particular case, not all the students might want to make rabbit ears, so they could make other ears if they wanted to. Another mini project that I've done with household items is finger puppets. Here again, using a paper plate, I made a finger puppet and I can then use these in class online to tell a story or the students can introduce their own finger puppets on the camera, even simple things like a name. So both of these simple acti activities can generate lots of different language. And once you've made them, you can use, use them many times over. If you prefer not to use these things, well, you can download handouts or simple worksheets like this, which you can share with students. On the next slide, I will share a link for you. So we've come to the end of this uh, short video, and I'd just like to finish off um, by saying that I hope that you've enjoyed these ideas for festivals and that you find you can adapt these for your classroom and online lessons. As you can see, by combining some or all of these, you can build up a really festive feeling. Before you go, you might find this website that you can see on the screen useful. We've created it to support teachers, parents and students with ideas for learning at home, including ideas and resources for teaching online. You'll also find a link there to join the Oxford Teachers Club, where you can find free resources for teaching, including ideas for Easter. Just join up and search for Easter to find photocopy balls to download and songs you can use. I hope that this has been useful. I wish you good, good luck with your classes and do have fun. <laughs>